Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to make a fun little model using Rotate and Component. Here in the Skill Builders video series, we like to mix it up. Sometimes we talk about specific workflows to create a specific thing or how to use a specific tool. Every once in a while, we like to go in and just show how some tools are used to just make certain geometry. Uh, this isn't necessarily a piece of geometry that you need to satisfy something specific, but hopefully an illustration of how tools can be used in a way that might help you in a future model. Let's hop in and take a look. All right, so I'm gonna create kind of a cool shape here. At this point, you've seen the thumbnail, so you know what's gonna come out of here. Um, where I'm working, I don't have a thumbnail, so we're still winging this thing. Let's go ahead and I wanna start with a sphere. We've done a couple videos, or well, one video specifically, showing how it should only take you a few seconds to create a sphere. So I'm gonna assume you've watched that, and if no, if not, you probably should. Um, but the idea is two spheres drawn on two planes like this, select the larger of the two, follow me, and then pick the smaller one, and there you go, you have a sphere. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, and I'm going to make it into triple click to grab all of it, make component, and I'm just call this my sphere. All right, there we go, we got a sphere. Um, stand back in the garage, stuff's gonna happen right now. All right, I'm gonna take that sphere and I'm gonna move it straight up the blue axis, about that much-ish. Okay, so now I'm gonna use rotate. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna hit the modifier key option to make a copy, and I'm gonna bring it down 180 degrees, like that. And then I want to make a chain of circles here, so I'm gonna say divide that by, I don't know, 20? No, let's say divide that by 15. No, let's go down to 12. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I divided that by 12. I'm gonna grab that now, and I'm gonna make that a component also. I'm gonna call that a sphere string. S sphere string theory, in theory. All right, I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna rotate that. I'm gonna go off of this middle again, and I'm going to take it, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make a copy. I'm gonna come all the way around. I'm gonna type in 360 degrees, enter, and now I'm gonna start making copies. I'm gonna say divide that by 12 and see how that looks. That's kind of cool. What if I can get to all, mush all the way together? Let's see if I do divide by 20. I need to go a little denser, divide by 24. That's kind of cool looking. All right, so you're already starting to get the idea of the kind of things you could make with this. Um, I mean, obviously, if you ever want to make a Christmas ornament, you're 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 here. You've you've done it. You figured out how to do it. Um, but obviously, there's some other things we can make with this. And the cool thing that this is the part I really wanted to key in on, because these are all components. There's a lot of things we can start to do, right? So I could I could come in here and I could delete every other one. And that's gonna give me, you know, rather than a mush together thing, I'm gonna have a series of pieces like that. Okay, so some other things. So obviously I can, like I said, I can play with that string, but I can actually go into the string too. I can go into the individual geometry of one piece. So here's the component. What I could do there is I could go, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and turn on hidden geometry. I'll grab this top point. I gra I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit. I'm gonna grab that section right there, and I'm gonna move it up. Let me get something like that. Again, just an opportunity to make some cool new looking shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and go into one of these again. Let's go in, get all the way down to the geometry. Show me the hidden geometry. And if I was to come in and just grab this end point, um, I could pull that out. Maybe I'm modeling a sea urchin now. I can also play around with the scale of some of these items. So if I grab this one right here. So if I come in here, I, like I've been doing, I come in here and I modify geometry, I'm, modeling ev I'm modifying everything for all the components. But if I select just this one, 
actually grab the container and hit scale and do something like just take the whole thing up, make it bigger. See how only the ones around the middle are getting bigger? That's because I'm scaling the instance. I'm scaling the container on the outside and not the individual pieces on the inside. This lets me come up with, again, very unique shapes that I can work with to make whatever I want. Um, so maybe I want to do that again. Like maybe, So maybe we take this one right here and uh, scale that a little bit too. We'll go scale from the middle and kind of go up not quite as much as the other one, but I guess it's going to kind of give me a, a tapering from larger to smaller. I could keep coming up here, grab this. The other thing to note that as I did this, because uh, of the way that I created the, the component, notice how every time I do this, that axis switches. So everything I'm modeling on here is actually in uh, on axis. So I don't have to worry about any weird because this is you know rotated around the, a circle. It's at a different spot. I can actually just kind of come in here and you know what, let's do this. Let's get let's get rid of some of these. Let's make this a half circle. I just made a yucca. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I made a pretty cool shape there. I made it in a couple seconds. I made it with a couple of clicks. The idea here is when you go in to make these repetitive things, remember to make components because the editing you can do afterwards becomes very quick, very easy to, to you know, switch things up. Because each of these are components, because I have a component that is, uh, the components are copied into another component, it makes it really easy to make changes and uh, make this a little less. There we go. Simple geometry, simple repetitive geometry in just a couple of clicks. I could flatten that out and even make a flower out of it. But yeah, just something to think about next time you have to make repeating geometry like that, how you can use components to modify geometry and quickly and easily make changes. So this was just kind of a thought experiment more than anything else, which kind of brings me to a point that I really like to stress. If you've ever wondered, how would I go about this? Or can I do this in SketchUp? You can always ask. You can find somebody who knows, ask them. You can go to our forum and post something. Uh, you can, you know, come to Basecamp, ask, ask a staff member. But I want to encourage you to just give it a try. Worst case, you're working in a, an empty file like this. Worst case, it doesn't work out and you throw the file out. Not a big deal, right? SketchUp is a great tool, kind of open for modeling the things you want to model. And the best way to learn about if you can do something is to go in and give it a shot yourself. That was a little bit different than a lot of our skill builders, which is kind of a fun modeling experiment, but uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, go ahead and let us know down in the comments. If you liked it, click like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. But like I said, most importantly, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of this. If there's uh, models like this that you like to do, we'd like to hear about that too. We like making these models a lot. We like it even more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.